Hi, and welcome to the final installment of the video series, Five Ways to Become a Better, More Efficient Programmer. Today's video is managing levels and using current hardware. Before we get started, please take a minute to subscribe to the channel. And once you've subscribed, hit the notification bell. We're gonna be putting more videos up on the channel and you're not gonna to wanna to miss a thing. So let's get started. Using levels is an essential tool even in a reasonably small file, such as this mold base. If we look at this file, you can see that there are 979 entities, all on level one. Selecting one of these entities to work on, let's say this cavity block, can be problematic. Once selected, we can hide everything but the cavity. The problem arises when we, in the process of creating tool paths, need to make containment boundaries or covers or any other type of geometry. These entities are also put on level one. And if we need to go back and remachine anything on the cavity after we unhide the rest of the mold base, it's necessary to find and select the added geometry. In addition to the cavity, this is not the easiest of tasks and hardly efficient. Let's look at the same part file. This time I have everything separated by level. Everything is on its own level, which makes selecting geometry much, much easier. In addition, I've created view sheets to separate things even further. View sheets not only give me a quick way to see specific geometry, but also turn levels on and off automatically, as you can see as I toggle through. Let's go back to the entire mold base. This time, because the cavity is on its own level, I can turn everything else off, activate the cavity level, which then becomes visible. Now I can create containment boundaries, covers, etc. Because the cavity is the active level, that geometry is created on that level. And if I need to go back to the cavity for whatever reason, all of the geometry is together. There is no need for any additional searching. Just in this small way, you can see what a difference using levels can make. Now let's talk about hardware. For this, I've asked Jeff Donegan, one of the application engineers here, here at Axis, to help. Take it away, Jeff. Welcome to the Axis hardware recommendations for Mastercam 2022. This first recommendation is from Mastercam's website. Obviously, Windows 10 Pro. Intel or AMD processor, 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, they don't specify generation. Eight gig of RAM, which is up quite a bit on the low end side. Uh, OpenGL 3.2 and OpenCL support uh, with one gig of RAM, which is on the very, very low end side. And then monitor 1920 by 1080 resolution, which is pretty standard in today's market. And then a uh, 20 gig free on the hard drive, which is probably more than what you really need. Now to be fair, they recommend this as their minimum hardware recommendation. Uh, for us as Axis, we don't recommend this configuration at all. Um, I think you would be highly disappointed with the performance of Mastercam if you ran a box with this configuration. Now the second recommendation is, is a lot more closer to on point, I think. Obviously still Windows 10 Pro, uh, but they do recommend the Intel i7 uh, or the Xeon 3.2 gigahertz. Obviously the Xeon's a little bit faster um, we'll talk about the i7 versus i9. Um, if you're going to do the i7, I would definitely do uh, you know at least a 9th gen i7. I wouldn't go much older than that. Um, 32 gig of memory. Memory is kind of tricky. One of those things, I, my recommendation is always get whatever you can afford. Uh, but 32 gig will definitely run the machine quite well. Um, the NVIDIA Quattro, 4 gigabyte graphics card or better. That's dedicated memory on the graphics card. Um, that's a pretty good card. Uh, I, I have no issue with it. They make, a, they make them though it's six gig or eight gig cards now that are pretty still reasonable as far as cost goes. So, but it's not bad. Um, then the same, the standard 1920 by 1080 uh, dual monitors they recommend now, uh, just because it makes it easier to, to position things around. Um, and then the biggie is uh, a solid state hard drive, which makes a huge, huge difference on calculation time. 
So I would definitely look if you're buying a new computer uh, in today's market, I would not buy a computer without solid state. All right, so now we're going to talk about what we recommend as Axis as far as hardware goes. So obviously the operating system doesn't change. It's still Windows 10 Pro. Uh, the CPU does change, however. Um, it's an Intel i9, 10th gen or better. Uh, that's actually what I run. Um, some of the other guys run the Intel Xeon. Um, I couldn't get the Xeon in the box that I wanted, so I have the Intel i9. Um, but the fastest processor out there is actually uh, by AMD. Um, they passed Intel a couple years ago, so they have a new Threadripper chip out. But it's actually the fastest processor out right now. Um, as far as memory goes, uh, I would look at 64 gig of memory. It doesn't really make a huge price jump. Uh, memory doesn't uh, until you get past the 64 gig. Um, all of our guys, uh, myself included, we all run 64 gig uh, on our laptops. Um, video card is... Again, pretty close to the same, the Quattro RTX uh, 4000s. Um, with those cards, it, it's a pretty good machine. Uh, it's a pretty good graphics card. has good OpenCL support as well to process those cutter paths on the graphics card. Um, you can also look at the GeForce card. It's, it's better known as a gaming card. Um, you know, If you're going to do a GeForce, I'd look at the 2080 Ti or the Titan. Um, these cards, you know, they are a gaming card, but they still um, perform very well on CAD CAM, just not quite as good as the Quattro, uh, but they're definitely a lot cheaper. So if you're looking for bang for your buck, you might look at a GeForce versus a Quattro. Um, and then on the hard drive, obviously, again, we still recommend solid state hard drives. Uh, we don't buy any computers anymore without solid state. It just makes that big of a difference when it comes to um calculation time, operating system, everything else was just running better. All right, so one of the last things I wanted to share with you is there, there's two websites that we use uh, to look at new hardware that's coming out, how it's benchmarking, bang for your buck, all that stuff. Um, the first one is www.videocardbenchmark.net. Um, great website. Look at all the cards, how much they cost, what they benchmark for graphics and CAD and everything else. Uh, and then the other one is cpubenchmark.net. Uh, I use both those all the time when we're looking at upgrading hardware to see what's out there and, and uh, what I should be looking at and cost and, and everything else. So I just wanted to leave you with those last two little uh, links there. You can see uh, great websites. Go check them out if you guys are looking at hardware. So that concludes this presentation for computer hardware for Mastercam 2022. As always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to give us a call at 248-926-8810 or email us at support at accessinc.com. Thanks and have a great day.